I'm Kay Bess, and this is The Beehive. Women in voiceover, the voices of the fairer sex that keep the wheels of commerce and creativity moving in this country. Voices you hear every day, but names you likely don't know until now. Joining me today in the hive is Virginia Hamilton. She is the in-show announcer for The View on ABC. 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 She also does the promo campaign for The View, and she does promos for Good Morning America. This will be her eighth year doing On the Red Carpet for the Oscars, which is a two- to three-hour live show on the red carpet, which is amazing that you do that. Absolutely frightening, (laughs) yeah. And she is also uh, (laughs) the imaging voice for over 15 affiliate TV stations across the country, including KABC Channel 7 here in Los Angeles. Yes, my favorite. So you have absolutely heard Virginia, and now you're going to get to know her a little bit better. So tell me how you first got into voiceover. What brought you to it? Oh, I come to voiceover by way of acting. I, I guess usually people either come through radio or acting. Mine's acting. Wow. I, uh, yeah, I was a full-time actor. Were you doing television? Were you yeah, I was doing interview? television, stage, some film. And I literally fell into some voiceover when I was living in Chicago. I had my own theater company there. Okay. And we did a musical and somebody came in and said, you should do voiceover. And I'm like, what's that? And it became the thing that everybody, like commercials. So back in the day, commercials were the side job that just paid yeah. bills. Yeah. Nobody wanted to do them. They had to do them. <laughs> yeah. So voiceover was kind of like that. It was just another round of commercials, really. And Chicago was a great place to be because there was that was so the hub of the agencies. advertising agencies. Yes. So like I did a big Sears campaign, which was amazing and... Once I kind of got into it, it went pretty quick, but it was always the side thing. Never really paid attention to it. Then I moved out to LA. How long ago did you move to LA? Um, 96. 96. Okay. You know, and there are times where you focus more on it. Like, you know, after a few years, I started to focus a little bit more on it and was having some success. And, you know, the more you focused on it, the for me, the more success I got. Yeah. But it, when I, I switched over to being full-time, when I started talking, my husband and I started talking about having kids because ah. I've played a lot of pregnant ladies on TV, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I've had every size bump there is to know that you're not working. The moment you're pregnant, you are, you're not making money for a year because nobody's going to hire you right? for on camera. Yeah. So, and that was how I made a living. So yeah. my husband's a drummer. So I didn't, you know, we were both. You know, in that so the actor of... was supporting the drummer. I know how <laughs> that goes. It was just, you know, a shared yeah. folly. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> when we talked about that, I was like, well, the one thing I knew I could do was voiceover. So I actually was did one of those things where I put a plan together. That was early on before people did the home studios. That yes. was really early on. Really the only people that had done that were radio people. Who are working because every, they have yeah, yeah, they exactly. have the ability to do that. Right. So it was early on for me and I was like, huh, well if I put a studio together in my closet, I can go after agents all across the country. And and, and you were thinking about this in the mid nine in the mid nineties? No, that must have been early the early two thousands. So somewhere in there. Okay. Because So it would have been like a year or so before getting pregnant or having my kid. Yeah. And in doing that, you know, and that was the first time I was also kind of discovering promo. Mm -hmm. My agency at that time did not have a promo department. Mm -hmm. When I brought it up to the head of the agency who I adore, but he was like, no, you're not like, there's nothing for you. So I went and put a promo demo together. Don't tell me. (laughs) Oh, totally. It's the best thing anybody can ever say to you. Yeah. Especially a man. Yeah. Any man telling you that you can't do that? Like, there's no job. Uh, yeah. That's kind of been the thing that drives me for yeah. everything. Yeah. And so I put a promo demo together, and he was the first one. Like, when I played it for him, he was like, I was wrong. But they didn't have a promo department. Right yeah. So yeah. I went 
across the country. I picked up agencies everywhere. I had agents all over the country. And within six months of my plan, I'd completely transitioned into full-time voiceover. It took off. And then I got pregnant. <laughs> so that, That's pretty good timing. Yeah. I mean, to, yeah. because to be able to work from home and to be able to audition from home. It's is, like yeah. the golden handcuffs that everybody loves to say. Yeah. But it was amazing for me because I was able to have my kids. Yeah. And they were back to back. Yeah. And I took a total of two weeks off for both of them. One of the second time, it was five days. Like I had a campaign that I was working on and yeah. they had the edit, you know, you're like, I have pumped through so many jobs. Yeah. Oh, I did. I, for when Esther was two weeks old, I want to say I had been working for CBS doing promos for, uh, for daytime. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, Eve Schultz, she's the, the producer. Um, she was fabulous. And, uh, they called and said, we need Kate. And I'm like, I just had a baby and I'm, and they said, bring her. And, and so, we all know that the moment you're not there for your job, yeah, it just is one of those things in this business that most jobs are not contract. And the moment somebody else steps in, like your temp, yeah. like everybody else gets a temp that just comes in to whiz in and do their little work and yeah. they leave. Yeah. Unfortunately, with what we do, the moment somebody else hears another voice, it could be awful. It, the person could be right. terrible, right. but it's something new and somebody, and somebody at the top goes, well, that was refreshing. That was different. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's different. And well, God bless Eve because she said, just, just bring her. And so yeah. honest to God, Esther was attached to my boob and I'm standing in the booth and they're like, <laughs> we're rolling. And, uh, but it was fabulous. And, and, and I worked for them for another two years. And so Eve uh, saw Esther grow up and, yep. you know, and it was a great time, but that's, that's, you know, and I would think I was super fortunate that the producer on that was a woman and, yes. and, uh, and oh, was like, yeah, oh, the, please, I'd love to see your baby. You know? Right. Uh, so I, I know that that's, so they that's were kind enabled of rare, you yeah. to be able to, yeah. like for, I mean, and I'm not, it's not a man or a woman thing, but for, you know, people in this business where everything's very timely, everything's yes. gotta be right now. Right. It's yeah. not like you can go, well, I'll get to that next week. It's always oh, it's now. Yeah. Now, and meaning like within the hour or it was, you know, being able to work from home, like you've got the chaos. It's like all this stuff that goes on behind Oz's, you know, <laughs> screen attention. <laughs> because they have no idea the full chaos that's going in the background. Right. And it's a testament to the people that really do this job that they're, you're able to close it down enough to focus yeah. and yeah. do your job. Yeah. That's but, very true. That's truly, you just like, um, closing the door. I'll be, I'll be out in 10 minutes. Like, and there was together, something you know? I have to say as a woman in this business, there was something about having my kids around that time that I think allowed me to get out of my own way about it. Just in terms of, we're all so creative people in general are so heady and tied to it and tied to, you know, the positive and the negative and you know there is that thing of when you have a family when you when you have something so all-encompassing that takes your focus it takes away all of the doubt like you got to get in there and you do your job you yes know? like you do your job it's like this is what you do and and I think it's also a mix of like I love acting and that's why I feel like I'm good at what I do right like yeah. that's what serves me in this business and partly why I love voiceover so much, but for, to be able to pull all that together, it clicked. It was all the things, all my strengths fit in, you know, yeah. it's not just the creativity. It's you're in your, you're in business for yourself. Right. Yep. And you know, there's a lot of that right hand, right side of your brain going on. Yes. And that was really good for me. So it's true. It is very, very focusing. And I do think that there are a lot of strengths that are engaged in voiceover aside from the fact that you have an interesting voice or a good read mm. or, you know, there's just a lot more to it. Oh, you wait. And I mean, I don't mind to take away from other people doing it. Like, you know, sometimes I look at actors and I'm like, it's a gift to just act when you're doing voiceover. You're the engineer, you're yes. the director, you're the producer. Yeah. Cause most of the, and not just for your auditions, most of the jobs I do. Yes. I am all of those things on yes. that job. Yep. Like Absolutely. I'm sending them 
what's basically a finished product. And, and they just for it those in. of yep. you in voiceover that think you don't have to do that, think again. Yeah. Because that's what's going to end up on the air. And I think that those people, because I think we probably know a lot of them, yes. you know, <laughs> where um, if you were unwilling to change with the times, you don't have a career anymore. Right. Oh. And, and so, no, I'm not going to get a studio. I'm just going to go in. Oh. You know, or I'm, uh, I know I'm not going to get ISDN. You know, no, I'm not going to get a website. No, I'm not going to do, I'm just going to have my, I'm going to send them my cassette. You know, yeah, or, exactly. Uh, you know, or my my uh, CD or whatever. It, Technology has completely changed yes. our industry, yeah, in amazing ways and in ways that are so difficult. Yeah, like you know, having time off, having a vacation, yeah. like all those things. Like again, it's I'm glad to have the problem. <laughs> there is a thing about the jobs that come by that you either get or you don't get. And we've talked about this, about the jobs that have gone away and you go, well, there's probably a reason for that. Yeah. Like sure. I was up for, um, when Obama was running mm -hmm. the first time around, mm -hmm. I was up for that voice. It was of the, of the campaign, of the campaign, of the political, campaign. The female political campaign. Awesome. It was between me and somebody else. And the political is worse than any other field oh, of this yeah, business. It's awful. It's, yeah. And it's awesome <laughs> and awful. <laughs> well, because and when we say it means you're on call 24 hours yes. a day. I yeah. mean, 20. So I was like, as much as I've totally given away that, I mean, that I'm an Obama supporter. <laughs> not that I really care. I love him. But it was interesting because let me say, first of all, I wouldn't even put my life in that much of chaos for something I hated. Yeah, sure. Couldn't do, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do that. And yeah. I was lucky enough. I wasn't in a position to have to make that choice. I yeah. was doing great. Yeah. But I remember going, Oh, do I, re I mean, I got kids. Do I really like, I had little kids at the time yeah. and you're like, do I really want to do this? Yeah. As much as I want to support them. And I remember saying, life. yeah, I'll do it. But you, you know, it's that funny thing of like, it came, it came and went, the other person got it. And I was like, Oh, thank God. I think maybe that was good. Yeah. yeah you're, it's, it's, a. Uh, yeah. I work for one agency that does a lot of political work. I've worked for them every political season for like a decade, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's funny. It's, and it, it often it comes at the end of the year, you know, yep. and, and it's sort of like, Oh, you know, it, but it's true. It's, you know, you send in, you send in what they give you. And 15 minutes later, it's, we've rewritten the script and they send it back. And then they're the, then they're, cause I, the, the people I worked for, uh, they do mostly propositions. And mm -hmm. so once they get something on the air, then the rebuttal comes. And so then you have to answer it. And so it's like, it's constant, it's constant, constant changing. changing. And, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a quick, uh, quick and dirty, right? Yep. You, you can make really good money in a short span of time just by virtue of the, the sheer number of spots that you're doing. Right. And, exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are crazy jobs, which, you know, truly you're right. It's like in the middle of it, you go, Oh, I'm, I'm eating dinner and I don't want to go back out. It's not 2 a.m. and some yeah. crap is, you I know. just had my third vodka. Okay, let's talk about that one for a second. Let's just, I have, like, I know this is your podcast, but let's talk about that for a second. All right. So my favorite one I is. I don't even drink vodka, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't drink. No. What? No. Um, We're not drinking now. But I have, I always love that because it just makes you sound like you're All such right? a big drinker. Um, but um, also working at home and dealing with all that those things come up like, yeah, sure. and the way this business is like right now I work starting at 6 AM every morning and it's common that at eight o'clock at night, I'm still working. Yeah. I may have had, like, it could have been straight through all day. Mm -hmm. It could be a day where I've had little breaks in there. <clears throat> it's every day is different. Yeah. But there are those times where you're like, all of a sudden you get something and it's the end, you know, towards the end of the night, like, and you're already out. Yeah. And I've done that thing of like, okay, let me just na nail it out before I go to bed. Yeah. Have you ever had, have you ever listened to your stuff the next morning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to redo and send it. Not because they said anything, right. but, but I listened just, to it you know, in the morning and I was like, wow, wow. I am way too relaxed for yeah. that spot. Yeah. I can't believe I did it in time. 
but let's it's just, still, and you yeah. send it and you're like, Hey, just had a listen. I think this is a better take. <laughs> okay. So tell me what's your dream voiceover job. Do you have one? I'd love a new, a new network, like its own that you get to create the image for. Like that your, your voice yeah. is the branded. Yes. Yeah. Like there's, so cer there's it, certain yeah. ones that you go that are just one voice and they, and, and I love variety. So that's why I say a whole network. Cause it's, you know, a lot of them now break it down. Like you see like ABC, they'll have your, the comedy person, right. And they have the drama person, right. all the big networks are like that. They yeah. have it broken down so that they can and they break differentiate it down sometimes by even by show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like yeah. there are some that'll just follow, but then, you know, others that we're going to go show by show and have, right. you know, so they can differentiate it yeah. throughout the, um, and I kind of think we, we, in some ways we're past, like, because everybody's trying to differentiate the show because the show is going to have an afterlife somewhere else. Right. We all know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't exist as much, but you know, it's like, you can always look back and go, there are certain voices that I have a distinct, like the Bravo guy, like, you know, it, yeah. it's very distinctive to be able to be the voice of a station where you do the comedy, you do the drama, you right. do the news, you do the, you know, those are all different approaches to promo and to, to be able to do all of them is like, it requires it's also, a lot of, a it, lot of skill. I would say I do not compete against other women for work. I compete against men. Women have such a slim margin of the work that's out there. Yeah that I, I have no desire to go for that work. It's not that I don't want women's shows or anything. It's not that. Right. It's that they're not my competition. You're not my competition. We may be up for the same thing, but I don't look at it that way. I always look at the guys are my competition. Right. If you had another career of your choice, what would it be? I mean, I always thought when I got into it full time that I would go back to the state, you know, like later on, you know, when you had a little bit more time or the kids were older, that was a yeah, big yeah. thing too. Sure. Right. Like I'm like, I'm not kids doing a grow. show right now. Like right. I want, I had kids cause I want to be around them. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see them. Yeah. I have a hard time answering that right now because I, um, I love doing what I do and I have so many challenges. I am interested in all jobs. There were too many things I wanted to be when I was growing up. Yeah. I wanted to be everything. It wasn't even that it changed week to week. It was that it was always everything. Always everything. <laughs> it wasn't oh, like this I week it's a nurse and next week it's an FBI agent yeah. and next week. And there are times where I've looked into all of those careers. There wasn't one of them that overtook any of the other ones. Yeah. The FBI agent though, I did, I probably went further on trying to kind of explore that one. Interesting. Um, but I couldn't like the whole your drug past. It just kind of it doesn't me. really work. Yeah. Killed me. That's a bummer. I don't even have that much of a drug past, but <laughs> I have enough that I answered yes on too many of their questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? Is this really this day and age make that much of a difference? Yeah. Don't you it's, want somebody that has some experience? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, this could really be a, I, like, I never inside, understood yeah. that. I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, don't you want somebody that kind of gets some of this at least just even <laughs> you, know? you would think you would think. So if you had to name one person who really gave you a leg up in your career, who might that be? Oh, a leg up. I um, think it, things would be very different if not for this person or, um, or, or someone who just really, really believed in you, encouraged you. Oh, it's so bad now. Okay. So you know how you have something that jumps in your head immediately? Yeah. And then it's gone. No, oh. it stays there and blocks out any, <laughs> okay. any other potential answers. I've had a lot of good coaches. I've had a lot of some good agents along the way, some good producers that, that have done my demos and stuff that really yeah. believed in me. Yeah, and yeah. I've been lucky to have that. But I have to say, when I was in Chicago, I worked at a really high-end health club. And one of the things I did was I was a swim instructor oh. and a lifeguard. And Fabulous. worked and worked at the restaurant. I did okay. all of it, but um, because you do everything, because I do everything all the time. I'm so interested in all of it. I'm like, I'll take the, all, all three of, of those jobs while I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, when I was teaching lessons, I had this guy, an older guy, and he was just delightful. And he was one of those that would try to get out of doing when I was trying to get him to do stuff by talking to me. <laughs> Just made his sessions longer. Right. So I was there anyway. I'm like, huh? but like, you know, a couple of times he was like, well, do you want to go get lunch? And it wasn't inappropriate. 
but that was the time where I was putting together my first demo Mm -hmm. and it was a big deal and it's expensive. Yes. And at some point we went to lunch. I think we went to lunch maybe one other time. At one point he gave me this envelope. He gets ready to go to the bathroom and he hands me this envelope and he's like, I really want to help you with your demo. Best thing he said to me, please, I have so much money. This is not a big deal to me. What would be, what, how I would like you to deal with it is at some point in your life, I would like you to turn around and do the same thing for somebody else that is in need. So I would like you to think of it that way. I, I'm just trying to support something I, I believe in. You sound very passionate about this. And, and it was like enough to pay for like half my demo, which was a huge thing Yeah. when you're 23 and everything you're going is paying your rent and everything. you're trying to yeah. like to put together when your agent says, well, I need you to get a demo together to do the, this voiceover thing. It was a huge thing to me. And I've actually done, I've turned around and done that with no strings, right. no expectation, just purely out of there's a moment where somebody's in need. And it was just very specifically for me, a money thing. Like I'd like to think we all as humans support sure. each other and yeah. can be there. But it was a big thing for somebody that didn't know me very well. That was just, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was such a detached thing to do. So I've done that a few times in my life where it's some, it's so detached. So it's not expected and moving on. And I just thought that was an amazing thing. I think giving is such a, is such a lovely thing. Yes. But what's required is for the recipient to accept. Yes. Or we can't give. It's right. Not, it, does, it makes it impossible. And so, um, and I, I do think that it is hard for people to, to receive. Yes. And oh, so yeah. the idea of let me take the pressure off of you by requesting that right. you do the same thing, which was great because it, yeah. it made it easier it to accept it. It makes it possible. It makes because it possible you, you're accept, like, you have, yeah. it was weird. You're like, yeah. I don't know if I can do yeah. this, but to say that this comes with a stipulation of something that, and let's be honest, he would never know if I did it again. I've never, I, I don't know. I, I don't even remember the guy's name. Like it's so long ago. Yeah. Like yeah. would have no, you could say his name and I wouldn't know that that yeah. was him yeah. anymore. But for me to, to know that I had a task involved with it and then to always kind of have, you know, like, and I liked it and I liked, it made me feel so good. So to know that, you know, when I, he's like, I know you'll get to a place where you'll be able to do this for somebody else. The co- the and then, and then to get to that place you, yeah. and you're like, oh my God, I'm in that place and I can and do I it. Can do it. Like this doesn't, I love those kind of stories because they, it really does set up this, the, the whole idea that we are, it's possible for us to do good. Yes. Know, and it's possible for us to sort of be a part of that wheel. You're familiar with the, the actor's studio, James mm-hmm. Lipton, right? Mm-hmm. So I have always loved that little questionnaire. So, oh, so, the questionnaire. So, so many people do, oh right? Gosh. I mean, I haven't watched it in years. I haven't either, but, um. But it, it always stuck with me. So, I had it for a while on my website. Like I answered the questions, you know. Oh, I love on that. On my website. But after a while. I don't even remember them all. I, I'll remember them when you say them. But <clears throat> yeah. So they're fun. So that's how okay. we're going to close this. Okay. Out. Love it. Um, so what is your favorite word? Gorgeous. When my husband says gorgeous in his accent, it's just, it's a, just a good word and how it sounds. Yeah. yeah what is your stuff. least favorite word? Panties. <laughs> panties panties what uh, a phrase moist panties <laughs> there you go moist panties there's nothing good about that at all like i know as a phrase it's not good either but those two words individually are awful panties just how it sounds it's not what it represents you know it's the eh. yeah. it's the eh. panties panties you know, and then I- moist and then you put it together and, and that's just, just disgusting. So moist panties. Fantastic. Oh, wait, I do have one more. Okay. This is a big one for me though. Okay. I haven't experienced it in a long time. Moist and panties you hear all the time. So it stays nope. fresh. Do you? I do. <laughs> Still, well, again, separately, not together. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Chub, chubby, chubby, having a chubby, not being chubby, having, having a, chubby. a chubby. Why, Why would any person ever call it? A chub, a chub or a chubby. A chubby. I find it repulsive. This is going to be the most <laughs> highly rated podcast. I just know it. I can't it's help awesome. it. No, I can't I, help That's why it. I love you. It's the way my brain works. <laughs> I can't wait for the answer to this next oh, question. Oh, no. What turns you on? <laughs> <sighs> oh, 
Oh, there's a few things. My husband's accent saying mm-hmm. certain words. Yeah. Oh, God. Like chubby. <laughs> if he said that, I'd punch him. Thank God we have that kind of relationship and he would understand. Like, is he, he's, is he, he's, he's Liverpool. Oh, Liverpudlian. Liverpudlian. Scouser. And his, he's got, he's very, like, he's got, kind of got that Ringo accent. And though oh, it's funny, I don't even find Ringo attractive at all. But him, he's got such a low register, my husband. And yeah, it's quite something. What turns you off? My husband talking, in, yeah, my husband saying panties um, <laughs> with an American accent. <laughs> Uh, okay. What t- seriously? What t- what turns me off? Turns you off. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be sexual. It's, it's, I mean, it's, no, I'm just be... trying to like. There are a couple things. Like it's just uh, ignorance and hatred. It's vile to me. What sound or noise do you love? Uh, kids laughing. It's always specifically your own kids. It's sure. really hard not to say that. Yeah. What sound or noise do you hate? I hate the sound of my husband doing paradiddles. Just a drum thing I know what a while I'm is. watching TV. <laughs> That's what I hate. I hate it so much. And I love him drumming when he's yeah, doing yeah. it. I love that. I cannot stand it when I'm trying to watch a show. To watch TV. Like Homeland comes on and we're watching. I'm like, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Especially the shows you really do. Do it on foot. his legs? Or do yeah. His, oh, He'll do okay. it in his lap. He'll do it anywhere. The guy will paradiddle any. And I get it. It's his. Yeah. It's but his, I'm like, yeah. I'm not doing vocal exercises in front of you all the time. Right. Uh, Tim, Tim used to do that in his sleep. Oh God. With his feet. Oh, God. And I'm like, wow, he's like a, <laughs> having spasms of some sort. And he's then having I realized, dreams. He's no, on no, stage right now. There's a rhythm here. That's God. like, there's a pattern. Um, what profession would you absolutely least. not want to do? You know, there's a lot of them that deal with excrement that you don't really <laughs> want it, that nobody's anxious <laughs> to deal with, but um, I find something very calming about cleaning so that, you know, but I got to tell you, I think the ones where you are subjected to other people yelling at you because they're angry and you do not have, have to take it and you have to take it and you can't like that, I think goes against my nature. If heaven exists. Yeah, I hope it does. What would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh, all your friends are here. Yeah. And like, come in or neener, neener, neener. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was expecting I was going in. What kind of thing is that? I was expecting. Look at me. I just expect I'm coming in. Clearly, we'll have some I words. Would, I, just, I... <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that that's what you, what you meant. Like, I'm dying for him to go. Come in. You know, everybody that you here. care about and love is right, right here waiting. And you got to go the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yours is the next door down. Um, yeah, which it may be, <laughs> no, but I still think most of my friends will be there. I just thought it was like, <laughs> oh, your friends are my here. My expectations. And you're like waiting. And I'm like, and? And? <laughs> so, and come I mean, how in. great would that be? Just all your friends and family, they're waiting for, like, just like coming into a great party. Virginia Hamilton, thank you so much for being here. Hey, that's a pleasure. <laughs> Where can people find you if they want to find you in terms of... Uh, like they want to go hear your work. What's your website? VirginiaHamilton.net. Dot net. Do you tweet? I do tweet. Can people follow you? Yes. And they can find that. And what's your handle? You okay. can just look up my name and okay. I'm there. Look her up. It okay. might even be Virginia Hamilton voiceover. I don't know. Okay. I'm just signed in. You're signed in, but you don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't need to look at who I am. I know who I am. I look at other people. You clearly do know who you are. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. (laughs) So much fun. And now we're going to talk about more stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Off the air. Thanks for joining me today in the Beehive. For podcast notes, pictures, and more information on my guests, visit the podcast website, thebeehivepodcast.com. Find me at my website, kbest.com. Follow me on Twitter at kbest.com and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you've a mind to, please post a review of the podcast on iTunes. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and good for the bones. Come back for more Women in VoiceOver next time in the Beehive. Let's